What's up and welcome back to the Chris Gates Fitness Podcast. Thanks, as always, for being here. Another fun episode on tap today, uh, a topic that builds on the topic from last week. So if you did not watch last week's episode or listen to last week's episode, would highly recommend that you do so. As always, these episodes are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Audible, YouTube. The video episodes are available on and basically anywhere you could watch or listen to a podcast. They are there. <laughs> and um, yeah, last week's episode, uh, we talked about the three best supplements, really the only three that you need in terms of athletic performance, training and nutrition goals, that type of stuff. If you want to uh, see your pursuit, the pursuit of your goals improve, there are three supplements that actually are proven to work and pretty much everything else is suspect at best. Well, today, today we're going to talk about the three worst supplements for health and fitness. And honestly, like the... The list is very long in terms of supplements that probably are a waste of your time. And, uh, you know, that's something I talked about last week where it's like there's not a lot of supplements out there that are actually proven, proven to work. And by proven, I mean like we have studied and tested these supplements and, and replicated over and over and over to find that, yeah, the thing that we claim that this supplement or this ingredient does... Well, it actually does that. There's not a lot of supplements out there to truly be able to say that. So when we talk about the worst supplements, for the most part, I'm focusing on supplements that just flat out don't work, you don't need them, or are potentially dangerous uh, and harmful to your health. Um, The list is very long for this. So there's lots that I could have included (laughs) that I chose not to uh, because I didn't want to just put out a massive shit list But there's a lot that, you know, you really don't need. And to be honest, even the three that work that I talked about last week, you don't need those either. To to repeat what I always say about supplements, supplements are called supplements because they are supplementary, meaning you don't need them. You can use them out of convenience or if you find that through building healthy habits and a nutritious diet, you have some gaps that you are unable to fill yourself, then supplements can come in and fill those gaps to help you have a really well-rounded, healthy, nutritious diet and lifestyle. That's what supplements are intended for. Most people don't use supplements for that reason. Most people abuse supplements, which is You know, why a lot of people struggle to see progress because they focus on the supplement and think the supplement is the thing that is going to get them there, where the reality is 90 to 95% of the progress that you could ever make with health and fitness, with training, nutrition, comes from quite simply just training, nutrition, doing those two things properly and having the right healthy habits that surround the training and nutrition that you do. So supplements are not necessary. Uh, There are a few that can help you that I talked about last week, but today we're going to talk about the three that I just almost unanimously tell people to to stay away from these. Um, So we're going to dive into those today, and I'm really excited about it. Uh, I hope you are too. And, uh, you know, I mentioned where you can find the podcast a couple minutes ago. If you are not subscribed, make sure you're subscribed so you can get every episode. And uh, if you can, pause the episode right now, leave a quick rating and review to tell me what you think about the podcast or tell others that hopefully this podcast has helped you. Uh, I would appreciate that. That helps the podcast get in front of more people. And my goal with this podcast is to grow it and get the right evidence-based information in front of as many people as possible so that as many people as possible can experience success with health and fitness. That is the goal to help people. So I appreciate you taking the time to do that. And if this is your first episode, welcome. I hope you find it helpful. Uh, While we talk about supplements and, you know, nutrition and and how to build the right diet and and habits, uh, I will mention I have a free calorie calculator. And if you have not grabbed it yet, uh, you can hit the, the link in the description to this episode that'll take you over to my calorie calculator and help you uh, just figure out the basics for your diet. <clears throat> you know, when, when I talked about how having the, the right nutritious diet is what's going to get you 90 to 95% of your progress, uh, knowing how many calories to eat, how much protein to eat, and, and often, you know, the disparity of carbs and fats can be really beneficial and get you the vast majority 
of the progress you want. So the calorie calculator is completely free. So you, all you got to do is sign up. I send it right to you. You plug in a few basic pieces of information about yourself and it tells you exactly how many calories, protein, carbs, and fats to eat. So I hope you find that helpful. All right. With all that out of the way, let's get into today's topic and talk about some supplements that you just shouldn't have. And supplement number one uh, that I consider to be one of, if not the worst, is fat burners, okay? Uh, Fat burners are sold all over the place. It's a category of supplements. It's not a specific supplement. Pretty much like every supplement company has a different blend of ingredients that they put in a product called a fat burner. But generally, the claims are that the fat burner is going to help you increase your metabolism. Uh, It's going to help you reduce your appetite uh, and help your body burn fat more efficiently. However, the reality is that many fat burners uh, are filled with ingredients that have minimal to no impact on fat loss and, you know, at worst could potentially be damaging for you. Uh, Most of them rely on stimulants like caffeine uh, to create like more movement throughout the day. If we're being just as, as simple and honest as possible, if you take a fat burner and it quote unquote worked, the reason that it probably worked is because it pumped you full of caffeine, like more caffeine than you would normally take. And Because of that, you fidget more, you move more throughout the day, which increases the amount of calories that you burn on top of what you normally would burn, and that leads to some additional fat loss. But the thing about caffeine, I'm sure you know, like we develop a tolerance to caffeine. So eventually, after you take that fat burner for a few weeks, uh, you're, you're going to see a reduced effect from that caffeine. And then you're going to kind of just slowly creep back to baseline, and then you'll be just pumping yourself full of caffeine for no reason. Uh, so the the overall effect of fat burners is very small, if anything at all, because I think a lot of people take fat burners and they think this is going to change the game for me. This is the thing that leads to fat loss, and it's not the case. Uh you need to change your habits and you need to be consistent with the right habits for a long period of time to actually see meaningful fat loss. There is no ingredient or supplement or food or workout that is going to lead to more fat loss. The thing that leads to fat loss is controlling your overall calorie intake to make sure that you're in a calorie deficit. And then if you're in that deficit for an extended period of time, it will lead you to lose more and more and more body fat. So fat burners are a scam. They're a ploy. They're really creative marketing and they don't get people much, if any, uh, progress or or actual results. And some of the ingredients in these fat burners um, could potentially pose health risks. So uh, I would not recommend that you choose fat burners. Uh, Ultimately, the best combination Uh, of things to create fat losses, diet, exercise, calorie deficit, sustainable lifestyle changes. And you can do all of those by yourself and save your money and not rely on a pill. And if you do all those by yourself, you're going to create results that you're able to maintain and you will make much more results long-term because you will be focused to create the right habits. When you are forced to create the right habits, um, that is what leads to lifestyle change, not a short-term drop in a few pounds of body fat. So don't waste your money. Don't potentially pose a risk to your health. Don't take fat burners and uh, just focus on those basics. You can make a ton of progress without investing in any of those supplements that don't actually work. Supplement number two that you should not take are testosterone boosters. And I'm talking to the fellas here in this section of the podcast in particular because this is a product that is marketed at men. And, um, you know, to be clear, fat burners and test boosters are products that I seriously considered taking when I was younger. And I'm so glad that I didn't. Uh, but testosterone boosters are marketed at men too, obviously. Uh, what they say is they're going to increase your body's natural production of testosterone, leading to enhanced muscle growth, strength, Uh, vitality, all those types of things. However, (laughs) most of these products are completely ineffective. 
uh, and at worst, potentially extremely harmful. So uh, most of these test boosters are packed. I mean, they're packed with different ingredients. A lot of them are compounds that are marketed as, hey, this has been shown in studies to increase testosterone. When in fact, they may have been shown to increase testosterone in like one study. And that study may have been conducted by the company who are funded by the company who is producing the testosterone boosting supplement that you are about to purchase. Um, There is absolutely no clear confirmed evidence that any of these testosterone boosters or any of the ingredients like fenugreek, deaspartic acid, uh, tribulus terrestris, like none of these ingredients are shown to have a significant impact on testosterone or any conclusive evidence that they actually do what people claim that they do. Um, And the thing about testosterone boosters, and this even goes to like people who take anabolic steroids and stuff like that, is that they can potentially negatively impact your body's ability to naturally produce the hormone testosterone, which is a huge problem. And hey, I don't know about you, but in general, I'm a big fan of not messing your body's natural production of just about anything up. So how about we all stay on the same page about that and uh, talk about why that's a problem. So if you supplement with testosterone, and if it's a test booster or if it's you know shooting up steroids, which maybe that sounds aggressive, but you would be surprised how many people do it and you probably don't even know. Um, what that's going to do, I mean, you're obviously adding exogenous testosterone into your system. When you do that, your body over time is going to rely less on its own natural production to get the testosterone that you need, which means that your body will naturally produce less because you're giving your body more on top of what you naturally produce. And the body wants to be at homeostasis, right? So if you're having a ton of testosterone coming in, and your body doesn't want that or is not used to that, well, your body's going to adjust and produce less and less and less. And what you could get into a situation is over time, the more that you supplement with testosterone, you really struggle to be able to produce it on your own, which means you have to take testosterone for the rest of your life. And I know there's all these magical things about TRT and how great it is and how it's helped people with you know their their energy, their vitality, their their muscle growth, their strength production, all that type of stuff, especially later in age, and that is great. And I think a lot of people, as you get later in age, into your fifties and sixties and seventies, TRT that's testosterone replacement therapy. I think it's a great thing, and I think a lot. I think probably more people should do it that need it because it can improve your quality of life. You don't want to be doing that when you're twenty eight or thirty two. Or 37. Now's not the time. Okay. So that that is a situation you could very realistically get into if you supplement with testosterone. And I would not recommend it. We have seen testosterone levels in men dramatically decrease over the last 20 or 30 years. It's actually very scary. And there's a number of reasons for that. The reason that it has happened is largely based around our overall habits. If you want to just boil it down to one thing, Um, our habits, especially here in the United States, have deteriorated. We don't do a lot of the healthy things that we used to. Uh, We don't eat a lot of the healthy foods that we used to. Uh, Obviously, you know, I think there's a lot of people who are eating highly processed, highly palatable foods all the time, which is not what our bodies are used to. And so this is my personal opinion is that we've seen testosterone go down because a lot of the things that we do on a regular basis in our lifestyle have compounded over decades and led to that decrease. Okay. The good news is we can address that by simply getting back to doing a lot of those good things that we used to do that really benefit your body and make your body feel good. They're not always the easiest things to do, but they are the most impactful. You will get dramatically bigger increases in testosterone from eating mostly whole nutritious foods, having a high protein diet, exercising regularly, 
regularly strength training and lifting weights in the gym and challenging yourself and progressively overloading, getting adequate amounts of sleep on a consistent basis, those things will skyrocket your testosterone. And what you can get from a testosterone boosting supplement pales in comparison to what you can get from doing those healthy things, having those healthy habits in your daily lifestyle. It's unbelievable. Uh, and, and I've experienced that myself uh, over, and it's not something that really happens quickly, uh, but over, you know, the last five to seven years, I've really improved a lot of those habits myself. And I've seen progress in the gym go up and I'm in my thirties. I'm in my late, made the late thirties now. And I've seen progress in the gym improve because of just doing the right things. So that is going to impact your testosterone much more than getting a testosterone booster or hopping on TRT or something like that at the age of 27. Um, fixing your bad habits can make massive improvements. Supplements can make small to no improvements, can waste your money, and can actually negatively impact your health. So I would not recommend that you take testosterone boosters. I find them to be very dangerous. And I always tell people to dig deeply into your habits before you even think about anything like a testosterone supplement. Okay. The last supplement on the list for today's episode is branched chain amino acids or better known as BCAs, BCAAs. Um, BCAAs are a supplement that people use primarily to help build muscle uh, and enhance their recovery from workouts. Um, obviously, amino acids are the building blocks to building muscle, right? Like protein is comprised, comprised of chains of amino acids that you eat the protein it gets into your bloodstream and it gets delivered to your muscles to help repair, recover, and grow new muscle tissue. That's how the body uses amino acids. That's why they're so important. So BCAAs are going to provide your body with some of those amino acids. We're talking about leucine, uh, isoleucine, and valine. Now, that's great, right? There's nothing necessarily harmful about that. Uh, the thing about BCAAs is just that for the vast majority of people, they're completely unnecessary because if you're consuming at least an adequate amount of protein, and if some of that protein that you're consuming is from animal sources, then you're getting all of the chains of amino acids that your body needs. So then if on top of that, you supplement with BCAAs, you are just paying for expensive pee. Like you're not doing anything. Your body is going to process that and get rid of it because you don't need it because you're eating protein and you're getting what you need. And the more and more research that comes through about, you know, protein and even protein consumption for people who participate in diets that may be don't include animal protein. We're even finding out more and more for those types of diets that you're basically still getting everything you need from the plant sources of protein that you eat. Um, so like if you're eating meat or eggs or dairy on a regular basis, there's absolutely no reason for you to pay for BCAAs. You're like I said, you're just paying for expensive pee and you're completely wasting your money. Um, if you are eating a plant-based diet, there's potentially a need for it, but if you're eating very high amounts of protein on a, a plant-based or a vegan diet, you're probably also okay. I think like 98.3% of people don't need to take BCAAs um, for those reasons. If, if you're eating enough protein, regardless of the type of diet that you're on, you just don't need them. Um, they taste great. They're very, very tasty. It's It's a nice thing to put in your water when you're working out. I did that for years uh, because years and years ago, it seemed like BCAAs were necessary. turns out they're not. And I wasted a lot of money on them. So in, in short, if your diet is severely lacking in protein, this might be a supplement that would benefit you. But I think for the vast majority of people who are regularly exercising and are at least mindful of their diet, those people tend to have an adequate amount of protein and by nature of that, you're getting an adequate amount of all of the chains of amino acids that your body wants and needs. So 
it's unlikely that BCAAs are going to offer you any type of additional benefit. Again, not harmful, but just a waste. So that's it. Those are the three supplements that I find to be the worst. And it's probably helpful to wrap this up by just saying I'm focused in this series on supplements that are, you know, specifically targeted at training and nutrition goals, like getting into the gym, changing your body composition, building muscle, burning fat. After last week's episode, I did get a few questions from people about vitamins, about magnesium, vitamin D and whatnot. And when it comes to those type of supplements, you know, even like a fish oil, uh, I don't consider those supplements that are targeted towards, you know, training and nutrition goals. Those to me are overall health supplements. And I I do always tell folks, especially the people that I work with that, you know, if you go to the doctor and you do blood work and you find like, Hey, everything looks good, but you're a little bit low on vitamin D or you're a little bit low on magnesium. And if your diet is, you know, pretty healthy and nutritious and you got pretty good habits, then that's what supplements are for. And, And absolutely you could supplement with vitamin D or magnesium or whatever it may be uh, to fill that gap, to fill that void. That's what supplements are for. And and specifically for those, you know, general health supplements, uh, absolutely, if there's a need, you should fill it. I, you know, I think a lot of people sometimes get into the situation of just reading too many labels and hearing too many benefits about too many vitamins and minerals. And, And again, you pay for a lot of expensive pee by putting a lot of these supplements into your body that like you might not need. And, and are they harmful? Probably not. But are they necessary? Probably not. <laughs> so you waste a lot of money. Uh, but I did remove those types of vitamin and mineral supplements from this discussion simply because I don't think that they kind of fit into the training and nutrition supplements that most people are looking at and focused on when we talk about health and fitness supplements. So hopefully that's helpful. But uh, what do you think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Uh, I would love to hear your thoughts and feedback. And as always, if you have any questions or if there's anything I can do to help, I'm happy to do so. Uh, You can find me anywhere. (laughs) My website, chrisgatesfitness.com. I'm on every social media platform. Just search for Chris Gates Fitness and I would love to help you out. Uh, if I can. So thank you for listening. I hope you found this episode helpful. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to talking to you again next week. Until then, have a great week. I'll talk to you soon.